Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as Marion has uh, said, um, uh, we're going to really be talking about um, uh, different uh, uh, new ways of thinking about uh, computing in relation to uh, the kind of models that uh, many of us have been building for a number of years. Uh, and so I, all I'm going to do is to spend about 10 or 15 minutes introducing you to uh, the kind of models that we talk about, but, but not in any detail, just to give you some history. Uh, and also to say something a little bit about Daphne, because to some extent, this whole um, uh, project is really based on the idea of this new facility that has been uh, developed uh, over the last four years uh, as part of our research infrastructure in the UK. Uh, and that is growing and changing very fast as we begin to port new sorts of models uh, into this particular context. I'll tell you a bit about that. And then um, after about uh, 10 more minutes or so, when I finish, Brian Matthews, who is the um, director of the uh, facility at Harwell, which is based at Harwell, it's based at the Rutherford Appleton Laboratory. Um, he will then talk about uh, Daphne itself and the organisation, uh, and that will lead into Juiced, uh, uh, Rambalt and um, uh, Tom Gowland, who will also talk, and that will, I think, take us up to the break. Okay, so let me make uh, a few general points. One of the kind of key issues is that computing um, it has been rapidly developing since the beginning. And I date the beginning as around about 1940, basically 70 to 80 years ago. Um, and during that time, computers have spread out everywhere. And one of the major issues is that new forms of environment, computing environment are rapidly being developed all the time. And Daphne, uh, the data and analytics facility for national infrastructure is one of those in that sense. Now, there's no real collective term, at least in my head, for uh, what these big new environments are, that we could call them platforms. I think that's probably not quite the right sort of uh, uh, use for the word, basically, because many of these platforms uh, which are being developed um, are really organizational platforms such as Facebook and uh, uh, Google and so on. Uh, but there's no collective term, but, but, and, and, but in some senses, Daphne is a platform. It's a collection of computer resources, basically, software, hardware, and the hardware and so on. And it's almost a meta platform because you may be developing a model on what you, you, what you consider to be a platform, but that doesn't stop you necessarily thinking about putting it into the Daphne kind of platform in that sense. Now, more of that as we go along, because all of this afternoon is really going to be based on those sorts of ideas. Um, the origins of Daphne... Um, uh, really relate to another project, uh, which was uh, motivated, I think, by uh, Brian Collins, who's a professor of engineering policy at UCL, called UCRIC. Now, UCRIC means UK, United Kingdom, uh, consortium or collaboratory, I think, um, collaboratory for research into infrastructure and cities. Uh, and Brian, and um, Brian Collins was very... Uh, politically astute at getting a large quantity of money out of UKRI, that's the UK Research and Innovation, the umbrella organisation pertaining to our research councils. And that's funded a, a series of initiatives in about a dozen universities across the UK, uh, of which, um, uh, of which uh, a, a number of projects have been developed, which are really related to Daphne II, uh, in particular what are called urban observatories. In fact, the specific origins of Daphne, uh, uh, which do relate to UCRIC in this sense, are based on a project called ITRC. That's the, uh, so many acronyms here, I Infrastructure Transitions Research Consortium, which was led by Jim Hall from Oxford over a number of years, basically, that has developed uh, really a core set of models which have been ported uh, to Daphne. Now, Daphne, in fact, is really the, re the computing or modelling arm of UK CRIC. It's a bit broader than that and a bit different because it's reaching out to many people who are not necessarily part of UKRC. Uh, but it has been funded for the last three or four years, as Brian will uh, talk about um, uh, in a moment. Uh, and it's based at the Harvard Rutherford Appleton, Appleton Lab. I should say that Rutherford and Appleton were two Nobel Prize winners uh, 
Uh, Rutherford, of course, split the atom basically about 200 years ago. Uh, um, anyway, they were uh, academics in Britain uh, in physics, basically. And so the nuclear facilities were really based at Harwell, basically, in the heyday. Uh, and this, this uh, Daphne uh, consortium is really part of uh, a bigger uh, consortium called STFC. That's the Science and Technology Facilities Research Council. And there are a variety of other platforms that, of course, um, uh, STFC are, are indeed developing in this particular context for other areas of um, uh, research in the sciences and social sciences. Uh, okay, so uh, why infrastructure in this sense? Infrastructure is really very important uh, uh, in this particular context because we're really talking about uh, infrastructure, physical infrastructure pertaining to towns and cities. So generally speaking, um, there are things like roads, utilities, rail, telecoms, there's a very strong uh, network and interactive component to this. Um, and it's even wider than that, because we're not just concerned in modeling sort of the physical assets in this context, we're, we're involved in the actual dynamics of what's going on in terms of this infrastructure, such as movement and location of all times. Uh, Juice Rambolt, who, who today will talk about um, one of those uh, 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 projects, basically, in that sense, is very much concerned with um, uh, micro simulation and agent based modeling, um, uh, which we'll explain as, as, as time goes on. Uh, and he, in fact, is developing a short project, which is in this general context of um, interaction and location in this in this context. We, in fact, uh, in, uh, in our group at, at UCL, um, in CASA, uh, have been involved um, in a fairly loose uh, and uh, rather low-key way with developing a transportation model called MATSIM, uh, which, in fact, is not our model. It's a model that uh, comes from ETH Zurich um, and the Technical University of Berlin, basically. And indeed, it has a longer history than that, but it, it's a micro simulation model of transportation in that sense. Um, it's, uh, I should make the distinction between aggregate models and micro simulation or uh, agent based models in that sense. Many of our models, uh, and some of these pertain to those that you'll find within Daphne that have been ported there, are aggregate models. Many of the ITRC Mistral models, uh, particularly the transport model developed by Simon Blaney and so on, uh, and to a lesser extent, the urban development model developed by Ali Ford. Um, these models are really aggregate in some senses. Uh, but this particular model that Juiced um, and that we have been working on uh, is an agent-based model in that sense. It deals with people and, the, and the, the, uh, the data requirements are really quite enormous because every person uh, or every household really in that sense is being modelled in this particular way. Okay, let me just uh, let me just move on. MathSim was developed by Kay Axhausen and Kay Nagel. Uh, uh, Kay Axhausen from ETH and Kay Nagel from uh, TU Berlin. It actually originates from a model built at Los Alamos National Labs uh, in the mid 1990s called Transims. Kay Nagel was a a research physicist at Los Alamos in those days, and then he brought it back to Europe when he came back to Germany, um, and it's been developed really in that sense. It's, it's a very widely uh, developed model. It's quite sophisticated, um, uh, and uh, a version of it, which Juiced is developing and we'll talk about, um, has been uh, developed by Axhausen and Nigel for dealing with the pandemic in that sense. So Matt Sim, Episim, I think, is the term for, let me just get rid of the, these windows are crowding in on my screen here. I'm sorry, okay, oh, that's better. Okay, so um, yes, Matsim, Episim, basically, that model. I should also say that this model or a variant of it, we're, we're not going to talk about that today, has been developed by Jerry Casey, who runs the City Modeling Lab in Arab, basically, Arab Engineers. Uh, and they've developed a version of it for transport for London. That's different from the juiced version, basically, but it is based on the uh, on the Matsim Episim uh, structure in this context. Um, that's been used quite specifically by TfL to look at the spread of the pandemic, basically. And their version isn't available publicly in that sense. There are no papers which have been released on it for a variety of reasons. I mean, these agent-based models deal with individuals. So there are all sorts of confidentiality uh, issues concerned with uh, the data, et cetera, in that particular context.
Okay, um, let me just make a couple more uh, a couple more points in this sense. Whoops, sorry about that. So, let me move on. Uh, to say a little bit more about urban models, uh, and in that sense, and then round it off and um, pass it over to Brian. I should say uh, more about these models. Most of the models in Daphne so far tend to be infrastructure models rather than urban or transport models. I did mention that Simon Blaney from Southampton is part of ITRC uh, and his group have developed um, uh, specific transportation models for uh, the UK. Ali Ford at Newcastle, uh, again as part of the extended ITRC Mistral projects, has a, an urban development model basically. And there's a third one that we need to mention called Spencer, uh, which is a micro simulation of the UK demographic system. It almost has its own platform, does, uh, uh, does Spencer, and that's developed by Nick Lomax at Leeds. We have a model too. Uh, for the UK, well, uh, England, Scotland and Wales, um, which is called, uh, the reason why we don't have Northern Ireland in there is that uh, most of our model relates to railways and roads in that sense. Uh, and so uh, this is called Quantum. Again, that's a platform in its own right. And there's a, a number of issues pertaining to these sorts of models that exist in their own right and how they can be ported to Daphne in that sense. Now, Daphne is changing all the time. There are lots of new things being developed within Daphne in this particular context. Uh, and Brian and Tom and Sam will probably mention a few of these as we go on through the, through the afternoon. Uh, the last thing I should really say is that... Um, uh, most of our models tend to be aggregate in a national sense and also maybe metropolitan in that context. They're not local, except that in the UCRIC project, urban observatories, which are really sort of um, uh, 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 outfits in universities dealing with real-time data in cities, basically, in transport. One of the best examples is the urban observatory that Phil James runs at uh, Newcastle. So uh, that kind of real-time data is also being thought about by Daphne in this sense, and that clearly sort of uh, squares the circle to some extent with respect to uh, applications within cities. Okay, now this is my last slide, basically. Uh, Juiced will be talking about MathSim and the OpenWell software, and then our guests, uh, Denise Puman and uh, Roman Rion from Paris, who are the, uh, the originators, really, and developers of these uh, uh, of the open mole uh, applications, basically, we'll talk a little bit later. And again, broaden the context, I think, in that sense. There are three things that I'm going to refer you to here. There is a book on MathSim, uh, edited by uh, Kai Nigel and uh, Kay Exhausen um, and, uh, and, and Horney, uh, in that sense, and that's available. I think it may even be open source, the book, basically, but that contains a very large list of applications of the model that you're about to see. Um, the more aggregate models, there is a book coming out next year on uh, applied urban modeling, which contains more of these aggregate uh, land use transport models and last but not least there's an edited open source book open access you can download that book on urban informatics it has an, a, an awful lot of um, applications of computing type ideas to a variety of urban issues in that sense now i'm going to stop at that point and hand back to marion or